Chopping willow trees one by one is too cumbersome, so let's chop them into batches. A machine rolls through the willow forest, cutting down all of them and arranging them into the rear truck bed. Once the truck bed is full, everything is dumped to the side. This is the miraculous willow harvesting machine. It has been modified from a Prinev Panda transport vehicle, featuring a special aluminum strip design. The machine has an additional specialized harvesting head at the front and two fast spinning cutting wheels underneath. At the top of the machine is a Y-shaped conveyor device facing forward, continuing to move ahead. The frontmost pulling and cutting conveyor device will draw in the willow trunks. In coordination with the bottom cutting wheels, the upper part pulls while the lower part cuts. Finally, the cut willow trees are gripped by the rear conveyor belt and deposited into the truck bed at the back. The machine boasts high harvesting efficiency, capable of harvesting over 2,000 small willow trees in an hour, with a total weight exceeding 20 kilograms. Upon close observation, it's easy to see the neatly arranged willow trees, clearly not growing naturally. The farm owner plants them primarily to supply raw materials to the wood processing factory. These harvested willows will be transported to the factory and processed into various types of wood or paper pulp. Truly miraculous, isn't it? This is a retractable spike specifically designed for firefighting. It is installed on the mechanical wall of a fire truck and can instantly deploy in critical moments. Its power is so great that it can pierce through hard metals like a bayonet. Named the Fire Spike Nozzle, it was invented to prevent firefighters from having to enter high-risk confined spaces to extinguish fires and to avoid injuries during firefighting operations. The spike is 50 centimeters long with the tip covered in drainage holes. Driven by a pressure mechanism, it can penetrate almost any material such as a burning car. Traditional firefighting tools can only suppress the fire but cannot extinguish the source of the flames inside the vehicle. However, using the spike nozzle, it can be inserted directly through the vehicle's roof. Through high-pressure water pipelines, water is sprayed out from the drainage holes, putting out the fire inside the car within seconds. However, this is not its most widely used application. In fact, it was specifically invented as a firefighting device for aircraft fires. Due to the large, confined space inside the aircraft cabin, once a major fire occurs, there are too many uncertainties. Blindly entering the space is extremely dangerous. If only external water spraying is used, the fire will only be extinguished once the aircraft is destroyed. In such cases, using the spike after piercing through the cabin, it can spray water at a rate of 1,300 liters per minute in all directions inside the cabin, achieving rapid and safe firefighting without risking firefighters' lives. This is an excavator working 500 meters underground. If no one tells you where the control cabin is, you probably wouldn't find it, as it's designed to be between the front and rear wheels. But doesn't that block the view? In fact, this was the only solution. The main task of this excavator is to dig raw materials for producing fake fertilizer, a type of rock called pseudo-rock. This rare mineral mainly exists between two rock layers near the Earth's surface, and it's only about three meters thick. Traditional excavators can't operate in such an environment just due to their height, which is why the control cabin of this machine is designed on the side. However, this inevitably obstructs the driver's view, so they often have to rely on the cameras around the vehicle, transmitting real-time footage to the screen in the cabin to assist with driving. To transport this more than 10-meter long machine underground, it first needs to be disassembled above ground, then the parts are taken down using an elevator and reassembled underground. After completing precise blasting, the excavator travels through rugged tunnels to the blast site to collect the pseudo-rock. At that time, a treasure-bearing vehicle, 3 meters long and 1 1.8 meters high can carry up to thousands of pounds of ore in one trip. The driver then shifts into reverse and returns along the same path, eventually dumping the ore onto a conveyor belt that transports it to the surface. It's worth noting that to work in such a confined and enclosed environment, the driver not only needs exceptional driving skills, but also a strong mind. If offered a generous salary, would you be willing to take this job? This is Apple's secret laboratory. Before each generation of iPhones is officially released, they must endure tests like water spraying, dropping, and vigorous shaking to assess the durability of the new devices. Starting with the water resistance test, the lab divides the tests into four levels. The first level simulates rain, with no water pressure, simply allowing water to drip onto the phone. If it passes, the iPhone reaches a water resistance level of four. Next is the second level, a 360 degree water spray. Using an arched sprinkler, water is sprayed at the phone from all angles, achieving a water resistance level of five. Following that is the high pressure water spray test for level six, where a high pressure water gun directly sprays the phone. This is the water resistance level most high-end phones currently meet. The top fourth level is the clean water pressure test. The phone is fully submerged in water and the pressure 
is increased to simulate how it would behave underwater. If it passes, the water resistance level reaches 8. The iPhone 16, being released tonight, has achieved this water resistance level. In terms of drop testing, the lab has a dedicated robot program to precisely control the angle at which the phone is dropped, and this process is recorded with a high-speed camera. Different materials, from granite to marble to wood, are used to simulate various drop environments. As for the rapid shaking platform, it's used to study how the phone wears over years of use. Electronic devices are strapped to it and shaken thousands of times at a specific frequency to observe how they perform under prolonged exposure. Notably, before every iPhone generation is released, 10,000 prototype devices are tested in this lab to ensure durability, making it an essential stop before any new iPhone comes to life. How strange is Japan's drainage ditch construction? They lay a blanket in the ditch, pour concrete into the blanket, and after numerous round bumps form on the surface, a drainage ditch is completed. It only takes two days to finish a project that normally takes a month. How is this possible? First, the blanket is the core of this project. It is made of waterproof PVC material and has enough internal space. After digging the ditch, they lay the blanket against the inner walls of the ditch. Then, a concrete mixer truck arrives and pumps the mortar into a distributor. The other end of the distributor is connected to a plastic pipe, which is inserted into a plastic opening on the blanket, and mortar is pumped inside. At this point, the blanket slowly inflates like a balloon, forming bumps on the surface. During this time, workers occasionally kick the bumps to check if the mortar is compact and firm. As the pressure increases, water in the mortar seeps out of the blanket, which is a normal phenomenon. After filling the blanket in the ditch with mortar, it quickly hardens, forming high-strength waterproof mortar. The construction time is short, and the drainage quality is high. When there is a need for drainage or flood control, this drainage ditch plays a significant role. It's worth mentioning that the surface of the blanket is covered with bumps to resist water erosion, thus extending the lifespan of the ditch. Isn't that amazing? This is the world's largest iPhone, 15 times bigger than a regular iPhone, and it has been certified by the Guinness World Records. The cost of production exceeds 500,000 wen. So, what makes it so big? First is the camera. The main lens uses a Canon R5, while the zoom lens is a Sony RX10. These two cameras give the giant iPhone a significant advantage in video recording and zoom photography, surpassing the latest iPhone. The resolution reaches 8K, and the optical zoom is up to 7X. To complement the camera, the flash next to it is equipped with a 400-watt flashlight that can illuminate an entire room when turned on. Since this is not an official iPhone product, it cannot use Apple's proprietary iOS system, so it runs on Android. The designer used a variety of applications and skins to make it look as much like iOS as possible. However, this is not a disadvantage. On the contrary, because Android is more open, it allows for additional configurations to be added. This phone is equipped with an AMD 6950 XT graphics card and an i9 processor with 4 terabytes of storage and up to 128 gigabytes of RAM. Of that, 2 terabytes is used for running Android and the other 2 terabytes for running Windows. Yes, this giant G5 has two operating systems and before booting, users can choose which one to run. The phone's performance is compared using benchmark scores. The iPhone 15 Pro Max only scores 3,767, while the giant G5 scores 38,859. Additionally, the speaker of the iPhone iPhone 15 Pro Max has a maximum power of 3 watts, while the giant G5 has 8 speakers, each at 50 watts. One of the features that most resembles the iPhone is the side buttons. Each button has a cylinder that provides a quick rebound effect when pressed, perfectly replicating the tactile feel of an iPhone button. Of course, many people are curious about how the massive touchscreen was made. In fact, it's constructed from an LG TV with a touchscreen layer added on top. To continuously power the phone, a specially designed enlarged charging cable called USB CPLUMAX is used, transferring power through a giant portable power bank. As for its practicality, after testing, whether it's making video calls or using NFC on the back of the phone for payments, it handles both easily. However, its only drawback is probably its size and weight. Standing 2.2 meters tall and weighing over 200 kilograms, it can only be kept at home and used as a TV. Want a simple yet effective way to protect your walls from moisture? Check out this trick. A normal brick wall can be compromised by moisture, so they use a special technique to prevent it. Here's how it works. Many houses have underground water beneath their foundations. This moisture seeps through the brick joints, and over time, the walls can become damp and moldy. Not only does this affect the appearance, but it also poses safety risks. Handling underground water isn't practical, so the only solution is to block the moisture from rising. That's where this technique comes in. 
The steel plates used aren't ordinary ones, but hot-dipped galvanized steel, known for its rust and corrosion resistance. First, workers find the brick joints along the base of the wall. They use a cutting machine to cut horizontally along these joints. After leaving enough space, they insert 0.5 centimeters thick steel plates. They then fit dozens of plastic pipes into the extra gaps, ensuring that the gaps between each pipe are no more than 10 centimeters. Once this step is complete, they use cement mortar to smooth out the brick joints, leaving the plastic pipes exposed. Finally, they pump mortar through the plastic pipes into the wall, filling the joints completely. Once the mortar sets, the wall's moisture proofing is finished. With this method, any moisture trying to rise is blocked by the steel plates. Isn't that amazing? This is a dead hammer falling together with a regular hammer. Originally, they were supposed to rebound together, but this hammer remained completely still, as if it were dead. This seemingly magical hammer is called a dead hammer. Since it doesn't bounce back when it hits the ground, it is also known as a non-rebound hammer. When you cut it open, you can see that the inside of the hammer is hollow, containing numerous small iron balls. In addition, depending on different requirements, sometimes it may contain layers of iron rings stacked together. However, regardless of the type, the hammer's body is never completely filled. A certain amount of space is always left inside. This is the secret behind the dead hammer's non-rebounding property. When the hammer hits the ground, under the influence of inertia, the iron balls or rings rings naturally fall from the top to the bottom of the hammer. The force generated during this process cancels out the recoil of the hammer, and the remaining kinetic energy only allows the iron balls and rings to move internally. At this point, with all the kinetic energy dispersed, the hammer loses its ability to bounce back and almost no vibration occurs. So what is the purpose of this invention? In fact, thanks to its zero rebound characteristic, users can control the hammer to the maximum extent, reducing damage to the surface of materials. For example, in delicate craftsmanship or precision component processing, each strike is just one strike. It doesn't cause shock to the hand or wrist injury, and the striking position is very precise. It is an ideal tool for many precision processing tasks. Move the locomotive onto a giant circular platform and let it rotate one round and the train completes its turnaround. This was the early method of turning trains. This giant circular area is called a turntable. On the turntable, there is a long enough track and below the center of the track is the axle. When a train needs to turn around nearby, the locomotive is first disconnected from the carriages. Then the locomotive is driven along the track to the track on the turntable. Around the circular area, there is a ring of circular tracks. At both ends of the turntable tracks, there are grooves that nest into the circular track, and both ends have horizontal bars extending out. At that point, the device works like a giant wooden plate. Workers grab the bars and push them around, turning the locomotive on the track inside the circular area. After a full turn, the locomotive is reoriented. Then, the locomotive moves along the track next to the carriages, connects to the rear carriage, and the train can travel in the opposite direction. It is worth mentioning that the earliest method of turning trains was similar to driving a car, which easily caused the train to derail at curves. Over time, people invented the turntable that moves only the locomotive, not the carriages. Nowadays, whether it's trains or high-speed trains, they use dual-directional locomotives, making the turntable obsolete. Isn't that fascinating? This is a technology that can grow fresh feed for livestock year-round. After pulling the plants out of the tray, no additional processing is needed, and they can be fed directly to the animals. Even in the cold winter, the cows can enjoy fresh food. The entire process, from seed germination to full growth, takes place in a planting chamber. It features an automated irrigation system, also known as a hydroponic feed system. Initially, high-quality barley seeds are thoroughly cleaned and soaked overnight. Once the seeds are ready to germinate, they are evenly spread across the planting trays. There's a professional temperature control system that consistently maintains the optimal temperature for plant growth. During this time, workers regularly spray nutrient solutions, and the fully automated top sprinkler system helps water the seeds. In just two days, the seeds start to sprout. At this point, workers activate the unmanned cultivation mode. The lights above mimic sunlight, illuminating the seedlings 24 hours a day. In this environment, the seedlings grow into fresh feed in just four days. Due to the soil-free and pesticide-free nature of this method, after the produce is conveyed, it can be fed to livestock along with the roots. During this season, the animals can still enjoy such fresh grass feed. After one feeding cycle is completed, the trays are washed, and new seeds can be planted for the next round. This system provides high-quality feed for livestock year-round, 